Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video we're going to take a look at, listen, and review Orbit and Eclipse by Wide Blue Sound. Now these are contact libraries that are available as a bundle uh, for $298, or if you buy them separately, they're $199 over at WideBlueSound.com. So this is a pretty exciting library because Wide Blue Sound claims that it's a new kind of synthesis called orbital synthesis. Now in a way it's it's kind of an exaggeration, but they're not lying in the way that this is kind of an innovative instrument. The way that it works is that you can load in four unique sounds. Each of these you can click and you can choose from one of these, I think it's a hundred and one sounds, and then you can blend them in different ways. For example, you have a gain for each one, pan for each one, tuning for each one, and then you can select what kind of filter you want. You can choose the cutoff and the resonance on each individual sound. Now the orbital synthesis aspects comes in the way of a rhythmic engine. So you have pulse, chop, and flow. And these are kind of buzzwords for saw, pulse, or square, and sine, LFOs, or low frequency oscillators. So if I choose saw, you get a rate, you get a depth, and you get a punch. Then you, uh, these are just your ADSR basically, or your AR in this case. Chop, it'll change that punch to width, which is the pulse width of the pulse wave or the square wave, and then you have a sine wave, which you only have depth and rate. And what this does is that if I choose this uh, flow here, you can see that uh, it's applying the LFO in the way that it morphs between these sounds. If I do the pulse wave, if I have it 100%, that means it's actually pulsing and controlling the volume 100% for each of the samples. And then if I go to uh, pulse here, the punch is kind of controlling, it's hard to describe in any way other than punch, but it's describing the way that the, the sine wave or ramp wave actually like hits into the sound. So a low punch versus a high punch. So you can hear it gets punchier, and that's just because it's changing the way of, of this peak. This peak, instead of it like ringing out afterwards, it's kind of just like stab and down. So that's the three rhythmic engines. And those are pretty straightforward, they're LFOs. The innovative part of it is that it's controlling the way that these all blend together. So I can hit random. This will make it kind of obvious because they're all vastly different sounds. Now I can pan, put this one left, put this one right, put this one like all the way right, and this one all the way left. So already I have a pretty dynamic sound. If I go to chop for a second, actually I don't like that, I want to do pulse. Now let me make the depth like 70%. So changing the depth to lower than anything than 100 is going to make it so that the notes are still ringing in between each individual pulse for it. So that it's giving it some kind of background noise. So zero depth, you just have all of them. And then as you turn it up, you get more and more of the rhythmic engine showing its face. So I already pointed out that you can randomize the oscillators by clicking the random button. Um, but again, you can go in and you can select each one of these individually. And then of course you control all the parameters as I just showed you. So I'm gonna filter these a little bit we make this one a kind of a higher resonance, this one a super high resonance, and I'll filter that one a lot. So it's pretty powerful already. Now if we go into the effects, they have kind of gotten all the, not all, but a lot of the common effects you would load onto an instrument like this inside of Contact and putting them conveniently in this effects rack. And with the phaser you can switch between chorus, flanger, and phaser as well. You turn them on just by clicking the on button. If I want some uh, reverb or space, it's called space in this case because it's actually the convolution reverb so you're, it's not like an algorithmic reverb where you can switch it live, you have to set it, you know, before. Oh, sorry, it's not on. You get a 
nice huge sound. Now, next let's take a look at the sequencer, and this aspect of Orbit and Eclipse is incredibly powerful, because already in the main engine you have these three rhythmic uh, modulation sources that control how you're you know, oscillating between the various sources, and you have 101 sources, so already you have a ton of power here, and then with the effects, you know, you can really make a dense, evolving soundscape. With the sequencer, you can sequence, I think it's 24 individual parameters, so you can assign these wherever you want. So you see when I hit a note, it starts cycling through all the sequencers. You can turn them off if you want, if for some reason you don't want one running. Um, or if you try something, you can just disable it and, you know, go on to the next one. But uh, orbiting depth, you can see here you have the depth knob. You can, uh, you know, you can hit process, and then you have all these different options, but I'll just do randomize. And if I go back here to the depth, you see it's going crazy. And again, that's that's powerful. So if I go to pan next, I'll do a triangle, and I'll make it a little less than uh, the full amount, or a lot less. Then we can go to, how about we do, where's the cutoff? Global, let's do global resonance. Oh, it's because I already have global cutoff here. Uh, so I'll do global cutoff, and I'll just draw draw in kind of a random sequence here. Uh, you can also do forward and back as well, so it kind of will go and bounce around. Instead of just running, you know, straight through. And then I'll make that a little less obvious. This uh, global cutoff is what's actually put here. You can see this dancing around. If I make the resonance randomized as well, make it a little less intense. Actually, I make it all the way intense. Oh, oh. Get those lovely squeaks. Now, if you're having trouble uh, getting all of the notes to line up when you're playing, you can actually quantize the input so that you can only hit notes on a certain interval. So if I do, like, uh, eighth note... Actually, I'll turn it off just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. See, if I hit a note on an upbeat, it uh, it it's it's off a little bit. So I'll do a higher note to make it more obvious. So when you have these several notes uh, going around, it, it it's it's a polyphonic kind of application. So it, you really want to be playing notes on beat, otherwise it's going to sound wacky. So you can essentially lock them down to the point where they're always going to be in time. To within the accuracy that you choose here. So, you know, if you want to lock it to 16 to 8 quarters or bars, that is an option. You can also click this waves button. It's just going to increment which wave you're on. You can also click this here. Uh, you can actually clone settings, and there's, uh, there are these uh, orbits that you can turn off. So if I do this, now it's skipping this one. And then if you click this, you, you can actually flip them around. So you can, if let's say you make a certain sound here with one sound, um, and you don't like it, but you like the sound here, you don't have to like duplicate it over with the new sound. Uh, you can just hit switch. And, you know, that's one way of doing it. You could also flip it here. But let's say you want to change the order of these. Um, it's much more convenient just to be able to go flip than have to reduplicate things in different orders. That's just kind of annoying. So I'm glad they put that in because that makes life a lot easier. So looking at this instrument as a whole, um, I mentioned that there's a ton of different sounds. 100 and 101, is that what I said? Uh, sound sources. I'll put that in the screen if I'm wrong. But um, you also have 250 presets per library. So Orbit has 250 presets, and Eclipse also has 250 presets. So if I go to Flow, um, I'll just click Dear Diary. And the Flow ones tend to make the nicest kind of pad sounds, I guess, because they are based on a sine wave switching between, so it's a little less rhythmic-y than something like the Chop. I'll do either dance. This one's a nice pad, too. Um, it's a more subtle. Um, I'll choose... How about Patience? 
This is more of a rhythmic thing. So each different kind of rhythmic engine, as they call it, is a different kind of soundscape you might sculpt. So, you know, there's a ton of presets. If you're a preset hound, there's also an absolutely incredible amount of modulation sources and potential for sound design if you're, you know, a synth nerd and you're into all the different parameters. And um, they do have an attack. So, for example, if I put this up, it attacks and re release just like a normal synthesizer. So, in a way, this is a synthesizer that is a normal synthesizer, except it's duplicated four times, and the engine is what controls how everything blends together, and then you have sequencers to further sequence a bunch of different parameters. So it's incredibly powerful, and there's a lot included. So that's kind of the, the good stuff of this. This is, you know, that determines who this instrument is for. Um, but I wouldn't say that this instrument is necessarily for everyone. It's definitely made for... I guess one application would be background cues if you're working on a film or something, background of a YouTube video, whatever you're doing like that, maybe even video game music. Then this will fill that void pretty nicely in a way that other instruments such as um, Spitfire Phobos or eDNA Earth might not necessarily fill. Um, another application or another instrument that's similar, um, I would think output signal is similar. but in a different way. Orbit and Eclipse are a little more suited towards the sound design, I guess the sound design aspect of it, whereas those other instruments I mentioned are a little more focused on the compositional side of things. Uh, signal is much more easy to just play. Whereas this, a lot of the patches I'll just click this one you can't really compose with something like that. It's really something you use as a soundscape. And a lot of the patches are like that. And a lot of the raw sounds are very detailed and rich, and there's several notes going on. There might be harmonies. And that makes it hard to compose with this instrument in a normal manner. Um, so it's definitely, I'd say it's more well-suited for something where you're hitting a note and having it evolve and create this big soundscape that never, never uh, repeats itself in the background, where then you use a more, I guess, traditional sample instrument or synthesizer on top of it to actually sculpt your melody. It's not to say that you can't do it with this. If you go into the flow patches, a lot of these are more traditional and um, that you can compose with them. Oh, so I have input quantizing on still. So a lot of the flow ones are like that where you can easily compose with them, but a lot of the patches are, I mean, this will be a bad example because it's supposed to be crazy, but if I play this, you hear there's some atonal sounds in this, and a lot of these pulse sounds this one's kind of atonal in a way, um, mostly just because of the rate, but there are a lot of raw sounds that are kind of atonal, so that makes it hard to compose with them. It's not to say it's a bad thing, it's just a different thing than you may be looking for. So I think this instrument has a niche market. Um, so if you're looking for a one-size-fits-all kind of library, this isn't really something that I think everyone should get, but this is a library that I think the right person who needs something like this should definitely get, just because of its, its power in editing and modulation. So I also want to talk about the cost. Now, the cost is something that when I looked at it at first glance, I saw $199 per instrument, that's similar to orbit, or sorry, that's similar to output substance, output signal, um, and it's actually more expensive than something like eDNA Earth. So if you're looking for a broad, one-size-fits-all library, something like those would be a better choice for the same or cheaper. Um, and just looking at this instrument on its own right, it's uh, $298 for the bundle, and it's only about 1.4 gigabytes of sounds. And... If you do the math, that comes to something like $212 per gigabyte of sounds. Whereas if you compare that to something like almost any Spitfire library, you know, some of their products go down to like $2 per gigabyte, $4 per gigabyte, $1, or sorry, for Contact or Complete 12, it's something like $1.70 per gigabyte. I forgot the numbers, but in the reviews on Genera Studios, if you uh, link down below, um, or I've linked down below, 
to this review, um, if you look around to my other reviews, a lot of the other libraries are much cheaper on a cost per gigabyte metric. Now, this isn't really that kind of library. They're not trying to do deep sampling. If you go into the mapping editor, you'll see that, well, first of all, they've laid out their samples in a very strange manner. There's only four uh, groups inside, but there's all these samples mapped around. And if you click them, you see that it kind of looks like they only sampled everything for one note. And with an instrument like this, that's fine to, to do very minimal sampling um, because it's not supposed to sound real. It's supposed to sound like a synthesizer. You're supposed to make wacky sounds with it. So time stretching of samples and everything is completely fine. It, it's, you know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But in a value of samples per dollar metric, it's bad. But if you look at the number of presets, 250, I think the math comes out to about 60 cents per preset, which if you think of something like a preset you might buy in a massive pack or a serum preset pack, that's similar to what you might pay, 50 cents per preset, maybe you'll get it down to 10 cents per preset, but in this you're getting a sample instrument with an incredible amount of modulation power in a kind of innovative way. So I just opened up uh, Generous Studios here, as you can see, in the uh, blog section, and I do have the review here you can go and read, but I wanted to talk about something else that this library offers. Uh, it, they just, these libraries aren't necessarily new, but on October 15th, uh, this is just a post I did uh, on October 14th, they, they came out with the expansion pack for each of the libraries, and they also came out with something called Skypad, which is very interesting. There's this thing called Line Lemur, which is an app that loads in on your iOS or Android device, and they programmed a custom I guess, application that runs inside Lemur. So you can actually control the contact instrument inside on your phone or your iPad or something. And not only that, but it actually um, gives you more control than what you actually get just by default. So if I go back and I go into the review here, I have a section where I talk about it here a little bit. And this is just one example. This is the XY pad, but there's also this kind of spatial mixer, and there's this, I forget, orbital kind of mixer thing. I, again, I don't have this because the Line Lemur app is actually not free. The Skypad app is entirely free, and it comes with the purchase of, uh, I, I don't know if it's for both of them. I know it's for the bundle. But it looks very cool, so if you already have Lemur or you're interested in getting into it, it looks like there's some cool capabilities in, in several ways. Um, it's not something that I'm currently interested in getting, so that's why I'm not playing with it here. But it is a very cool feature, and it's something I've never heard of any contact developer doing. And I want to give them praise for doing something out of the box and innovative. Again, this instrument's already pretty innovative in the way that it allows you to really just modulate everything. And in a kind of new way, um, but again, the Skypad Lemur app is another great innovation that they're doing with this this libraries or these libraries so just to show you a clips for a second I'm not going to go and play through everything in this video because I already have the exploring the sound videos which I will uh, link at the end of this video um, where you can actually just listen to me playing without talking for both of the instruments so opening up you'll see the interface is almost identical um, I believe for this page it actually is identical the only difference is the background color go to effects uh, they title some things differently like this is called convolve I think instead of saturation and scream or maybe these are flipped or something but they're essentially exactly the same this is the same just with different colors and then another nice thing for both instruments they give you a tips page which is nice but anyways that's that's it for this the coverage of the instrument on my review on Genera Studios I do actually go into some grading, um, whereas that I break it down to categories and I give it a score. In this case, I gave this library a pretty nice 4 out of 5, and it really loses its points, to me at least, in terms of the cost, because I think that they missed a big opportunity. If, if they made this library 100 bucks, I'd be telling every single musician I know, go out and buy this thing, because it's great and it does a lot of things you can't do elsewhere, and that would be a bargain for two libraries with so many presets that are so powerful. But at a $298 price point, I, I would say only get it if this is kind of, you know, your bread and butter in the music world. 
Um, the sounds, I gave uh, you know a 4 out of 5, not a perfect score, because they aren't multi-sampled, and there's not many sounds. The library is small enough where they could have easily tripled the raw sound, you know, done a little more multi-sampling or given us more sound sources, and it'd still be a very tight, small package library, which is a plus. You know, hard drive space is not free. I have five external hard drives plugged into my computer, like 10 terabytes or something, and it's it's a pain to have all these big libraries, but sometimes you need them. I'm glad they took space as a concern, but I knocked off a point just because of that. But anyways, the final review for Eclipse and Orbit as a package deal is a solid 4 out of 5. Be sure to check it out. I think everyone should at least check this instrument out. Obviously you are if you've watched, you're have you watching this video, especially this far. Um, but go on their website, take a look at what, what they claim about it, and listen to their examples as well as my Exploring the Sounds videos to see if it's the right instrument for you. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to leave a like, subscribe for more of these types of videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.